can't hurt you. Keep your mouth shut! Oh. What is it, Emily? Oh, no, Mum. I'm sorry for the delay, sir. Give me a simple murder case, any day. Begging your pardon, sir. I want a word with her, Mr. Oakes. Helen, it's not too late to tell the truth. I've told it. Oh, I don't believe you. I've said my piece. Mr. Byrne, you thought you saw someone running off the night of my father's death? Oh, sir, I might have done. There's no way of telling. What's the point at issue, Mr. Mannion? I thought the woman confessed. It's written down. I put my mark on it. I killed him for the way he treated me. That's all I have to say. That's enough for me. The magistrate will commit on that charge, sir. There's no need for you to attend. Why, Donny? He looked for you. Up along the Wallandilly. Up the hill. To kill. No more killing, eh? No more killing. Mannion, <laughs> it's done. Mama, she's free. Matthew Finn is paid back. I got to be out again. I got you. Finn. Finn. What can I say that name? Because he's dead? It's bad. Tory law. That's your law, not mine. I'm Johnny Prentice. I've got no law, no tribe. No white tribe, not yours. Matt and me, that was all. Take wife. Nilly. I don't belong. It was good, all right? Not anymore. In the high hills, we hunt. Find new rivers to fish. You come, Bill? Soldier, Patrick Mannion. Mr. Campbell. Your Excellency. Uh, I came to pay my respects to Mrs. Putland. She's upstairs, resting. 
Funerals, gloomy occasions. This one doubly so, please. With Johnson and the lights from the New South Wales Corps, with their empty condolences. <laughs> please, sit down. Mr. Campbell. He was never particularly robust, my son-in-law. Merciful release for you, David. Aye. Well, the town's simmer, sir, and it's not the midsummer. I know. I'm aware, Mr. Campbell. The military to a man cursed the day. I arrived here. The gentry opposed me. Uh, but the settlers will never forget the improvements you've brought them, sir. The settlers, sir, are busy with the harvest. I'm most grateful for your call. These past few weeks, I felt very much alone. Come on now, get down there. Uh, yeah. Open up a watch now, come on. Hurry it up. Come on, grab yourself. All well, Mr. Evans? Oh, yes, sir. See, my horse is fed in water. Aye, sir. Lynch. One moment. Mr. Evans, remove those chains. But, sir. Take them off. But, sir, they're, they're convicts, sir. They've escaped, so see? Do as I tell you. Yes, sir. Then unlock the others. Yes, sir. Mr. Patrick. Oh, that's a pretty welcome, Emily. Where's Mrs. Mannion? In the Rose Garden. And there's company. Who? Mr. Harvey. I wish I could bring better news, but the events in town and Lieutenant Putland's death. Poor Mary Putland. I'll write to her. She would appreciate that. Any support at this time. Mark, I can't mourn. I can feel no grief. Shock, but no grief. Don't you think that's sad? It's better not to speak of it. I have to. I felt sorrow for Finn, even pity for Ellen, but for Stephen... Forgive me. There was no one else I could confide in. Patrick. Mark. My deepest sympathies. Kind of you to convey them in person. A tedious journey by river to Parramatta. I came by the turnpike road. Mr. Campbell loaned me a horse. We were concerned for you, Patrick. Have you been far? Towards the mountains. You used to talk of crossing them years ago. It'll come. Gregory Blacksland plans an expedition. Blacksland? Are you acquainted? I know him as a wealthy settler stirring opinion against the governor. He tells me there are two sides to the matter. Are you to dine with us? Indeed, I just this minute invited Mr. But Harvey. I regretfully declined. I'll no doubt see you before you leave. Why did you say that? I'm sorry. I felt I had no option. Tell Patrick I'm glad he's ordered the men unchained. Even though he may not care what I think. Bye, Mrs. Mannion. Bye, Mr. Harvey. Fancy, sir, if you ask me. Nobody did. And she ain't averse. It's none of your business. 
Nor is that. Keep your hands where they belong. <laughs> Convicts. Bloody stupidity. Is he caught in you? He thinks he is. I wanted to talk to you privately. You made it clear enough. I'm unwelcome. I regret that, but your visit was ill-advised. I was concerned for Mrs. Mannion. And by now the whole colony knows it. I can assure you, Patrick, the whole colony is far too concerned with plotting against the governor to worry about such matters. Major, good of you to come. Mr. MacArthur, gentlemen, a glass for you, Major. Thank you, Blacksman. I'm in need of it. And me, I'm too old for the saddle. And I, sir, am too old for prison. Though briefly spared its rigors, thanks to my bailsman, the trial is set for the 25th. I'm aware of that. The court won't stand for it, sir. Has come. Don't teach me my duty, Captain Kemp. The corps indeed is restless, and Bly has given them good cause. Blacksland, another drink for the major. If it should come to mutiny... Then you must act. Bly plots with his minions. He's determined to oppress us. He's the governor. A tyrant. Action would be dangerous. And inaction unforgivable. For almost 20 years, we've rarely agreed, you and I. I think we've no choice but to be on the same side now. Well, do we have a case? We have contempt, sir, of my authority as judge advocate. A case, Mr. Atkins. Do we have violation of the law, malicious defamation, incitement to provoke disorder? Do we have it, Mr. Cosley? It's my belief, Excellency, the indictment will stand. However, to establish prima facie... In plain English, damn it, man! Mr. Hardy, I want an assessment of our chances without your Latin verbiage, sir. The great troublemaker meets daily with his confreres. He summoned Major Johnson. I want a case. Then let them all come. Let them lie. Let them whisper, fabricate, and distort. I'll show them who governs this colony. My God, I will. <laughs> God help me. They're all the law I've got. I'm going to dispense with your services, Mr. Harvey. Your Excellency. No, please, don't argue. I've been more than satisfied. Well, then why, sir? You run a school, Mr. Harvey. Well, it happens to be important to me. But, uh... No, sir, no buts. Please do not teach the sons of convicts and ex-convicts to begin a sentence with a preposition. They deserve better. You do agree? Yes, sir. I want that school kept open, no matter what may happen here. And I wish you luck. And I you, Your Excellency. I take the sentence. Forgive the grammar. Well, have we reached any conclusion? Pray give it to me without benefit of the Latin. Hello, love. Hey, you! Mr. Adams. Come here, Sergeant Major.
take this down and get rid of it. It won't none of my doing, but there's plenty here agrees with it. Yeah. Am I to take it that includes you? No need to threaten me, Mr. Harvey. I'm requesting you, since you wear the King's uniform, to take this effigy and destroy it. Oh, well, if that's your wish, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Jumped up fast enough. <laughs> There's to be an officer's mess dinner on the 24th, an evening of jollity the night before MacArthur's trial. Thank you, Emily. Your new housekeeper, ma'am. For the present, Mr. Blacksmith. Nothing is settled yet, as you can imagine. Quite. Ah, oh, I envy this place, Patrick. So close to the mountains. We'll cross them someday. When a certain gentleman is being dealt with. You mean the governor, Mr. Blacksmith? Well, as they say in town, ma'am, who called the governor a tyrant? To which the answer is, who called the tyrant a governor? Will you excuse me? I do hope I haven't offended you. I'm rather tired, Mr. Blacksmith. This is Patrick's home, and you're his guest. I bet you good day. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. You didn't tell me she was... She can't be a blind supporter. I'm afraid it's another matter, a personal difference between us. I'd like you to look at those signatures. And you signed it? No. I said I'd think about it. It's treason. If a man commits oppressive acts, that makes him unfit to govern. Treason, Patrick. They're traitors. The names on that list are among the leading citizens of New South Wales. Rich landowners, officers of the Corps, all determined to protect their interests. And their interests are cheap labor and profits and suppressing the emancipists. You've been influenced. I've been listening and watching ever since I came here. These same people sent Hunter home a ruined man. And King, they made him ill with opposition and ridicule. And now Bly, who actually cares for the small settlers and ex-convicts, which is something they can't tolerate. Connor. There are two classes of people here, Patrick. Those who have been convicted and those who ought to have been. I think it's about time you considered my father's wishes and returned to Ireland. I'm afraid I can't do that. Because of Mr. Harvey? Because I choose to make up my own mind. But I will leave here. I think that will be best for the present. And if I forbid it? Ah, no, Patrick, you cannot. You intend to go to Sydney? Tomorrow. The house there, like this place, was left to you. If you prefer it, I'll find lodgings. That's out of the question. Then I accept your kind offer. And Patrick, if you can, make arrangements for a housekeeper. I'd like to take Emily with me. God's name do you think you're doing? Insolent. Wouldn't do his work, sir, see? Cut him down. Come here. You know it's illegal to punish without a magistrate's order. <laughs> a real punishment, sir. Your father always allowed us to give him a botany bay dozen. Pack your things. Get out. You're finished here. But, sir... Another word and I'll have you charged. Burn! Sir. Lock that up and arrange transport for that man. I don't want to see him again. Indeed, ma'am. But what's behind it all? No sign of the governor. Oh, he wouldn't dare. Mr. MacArthur looks confident. Oh, damn Jack Bodice and his friends. Good, Good afternoon to you. 
Regimental dinner. Will you be joining us? Well, I would like that. A festive evening with some of my judges. No, sir. I shall enjoy the music and admire the ladies. Mr. MacArthur seems popular, Mr. Campbell. Aye, ma'am. Conspiracy's afoot. Even the music makes me uneasy. Paper mutiny, my love. They wouldn't dare move against me. He's late, Mom. <laughs> Handsomest widow, but not, I fear, one of us. Ma. Sir? Uncommon mild for the time of year. I dare say it will be warmer in court tomorrow. A high spirited baggage. I've always admired her, but not her taste in suitors. She was too good for Mannion. And now she's slumming. Do I detect a note of jealousy, Blackstone? Warmer in court tomorrow. My God, I like that. Where is Major Johnston? He's had an accident, they say. Oh, fell out of his carriage drunk, man. They say. Corporal be sworn in. Repeat after me. I swear by Almighty God. Gentlemen, I wish to state an objection to the judge advocate sitting on this trial. Sit down, sir. This court cannot be formed without the judge advocate. You sit down, sir. State your objections, Mr. McCarthy. It's a plot. No red votes are in it. I am brought a prisoner to this bar, utterly unacquainted except from room, and the accusations against which I am to defend myself. Oh. Shame! 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 There is a suit pending between us for a sum of money which he owes me and unjustly withholds. <laughs> Two, that he has for years cherished a rancorous inveteracy against me. Three, that he harbors vindictive malice because I once gave evidence against him to prove him a swindler. <laughs> Objects. He objects. On six counts, sir. A prisoner setting aside a judge of the court. And the officers allowing it, it's prearranged. And Major Johnson is ill, sir. Home with Allendale. Fetch him. It is for you five gentlemen to decide whether law and justice shall prevail. Yes. To you has fallen the lot of deciding a point that may affect millions of yet unborn. The safety of their property, their liberty, and their lives. 
I conjure you in the name of Almighty God, whose presence you are in, to consider the value of the judgment with which you are endorsed. Knowing you as I do, I am sure that neither expectation of reward or favor, nor fear of persecution, will influence your decision. It is to the officers of the New South Wales Corps that justice is committed. Justice. And from them, all who are just have anything to fear. How dare you, sir? You are about to obstruct justice, and I shall commit you for contempt. You, sir, commit? No, sir, I shall commit you. I order you to disperse. This is no court. I am the judge advocate, and the proceedings are adjourned. Adjourned! MacArthur's been rearrested. There's brawls all over town, ma'am. The officers are still claiming they're a court. And Major Johnston? He sent an answer to the governor. He's too ill to travel. Since your illness will deprive me of your assistance, I have summoned six of your officers before me for practices which I consider treasonable. MacArthur is what? Is released, sir. On whose orders, sir? Major Johnston's. He's here at the barracks. Damn and blast him. I'll have him tied. What's that? <laughs> What am I to do? What they ask. Deliver us from tyranny. It's rebellion. You must act to preserve order. Avert an insurrection. You have the support of every man that mattered. Read it, Blackson. Sir, the extreme state of riot and unrest, which endangers all respectable inhabitants, induces us to request that you place Governor Bly under arrest and assume command of the colony. We pledge ourselves to support the measure with our fortunes and our lives. Is at the Hawkesbury. It's too late, my love. My God, they mean to do it. Connor? We should leave for Beltraza tonight. No. I think you must. It's safer there.
proclaimed martial law. Campbell, Atkins, Griffin. They're all arrested. And Bly? No one knows. There's a rumor he's escaped to the Hawkesbury to rally the settlers. Connor's packing and the carriage is out the back. Will you come with us? No. But thank you. Well, it's MacArthur's day. I never thought it would come to this. Marker, I'm obliged to you, persuading Connor. Oh. I thought... What? That you encouraged her interest in you. That you saw some advantage in it. As it happens, my father left her no property, and only a small annuity, so long as she remains a widow. And you think that's important? Your friends are overthrowing authority, and you feel you have to tell me that? What is it? It's my painful duty to charge you that you are unfit to exercise authority in this colony. You are relieved of your commission and placed in close arrest. whether they intend to keep us here or send us home. What does your father think? That whatever they do, they'll distort the facts, and that he must get his dispatches home in order to tell them the truth. Dear Mrs. Mannion, I am sorry to plague you with our troubles. It's kind and very brave of you to call openly like this. I hope to continue doing so. As long as I'm allowed. You wield a fine broom, me darling. You make yourself useful and hold it. <laughs> a horse is ready, sir. Thank you. When Mrs. Mannion returns, tell her I'll be back in about a week. Good to have you back here, Emily. We'll start the harvest as soon as I'm back. Huh? Aye, sir. Uh, do you need any help in the house at all? Oh, we off with you. Saving it for. Got a visitor for you. You know, even now there's still time. I've been sentenced. The 
verdict can be set aside. For God's sake, they'll hang you. Let me be, Master Patrick. We both know who really killed my father. Do you think he'd let this happen if he knew? And meanwhile, it doesn't help. Helen. Goodbye. The colonial secretary will see you now. Patrick. Sir, thank you for giving me this appointment. My dear fellow, only too glad to see you. Please, sit down. Well, I've considered your letter on behalf of this woman. Though, as you doubtless know, we've been occupied restoring order. Yes, I've heard the courts have been busy. This man you mentioned, Donny Prentice. You say you were boyhood friends here in Sydney. Yes, we were. Later, he was supposed to have drowned, but... Do you expect me to believe that a child could have survived all these years out in the bush? I know he did, sir. He lives with the natives, somewhere up towards the mountains. It seems highly unlikely. Besides, the woman confessed on her own word she was convicted. To protect her son? I'm afraid I can't accept it. Distasteful as it is, she admits to being your father's mistress, even after his marriage. These convict associations... An ex-convict? She's been a free woman for years. Nevertheless, she was once a felon. For a trifling theft, sir. That's as may be. She admits to murder. And in view of her background, I see no reason to overrule the verdict. And I'm wasting your time. Patrick, we have to set an example here. We've saved the colony. The real trouble with Bly was his pig-headed policy. Getting convicts, sir an inflated sense of their own importance. It's people like you and me and your father who civilized this place. If convicts are pardoned and given positions of importance, what do you think will happen to people like us? I simply came to save an innocent woman's life. By her own statement, she was far from innocent, morally or criminally. Patrick, before you go, this declaration justifying our action against Bly, we're still gathering signatures. You've not as yet signed it. No, sir. Nor do I intend to. Very well. You will, however, be an official witness to this execution. That is not a request. It's an order. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me to the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I go back across the big river and see Mama. She's free now. It's getting a bit cold, eh? Soon I'll have to go back to sleep in the hut. Find my sheep and goats again. Maybe get himself a wife, huh? What'd you eat? Yeah, keep him warm at night. Cold, Emily. Well, I like it, sir. Freshness of it. Are you comfortable in there? Oh, yes, sir. No ghosts? Pardon, sir? Well, a stupid remark. Pay no attention to it. Are you happy? I. You're not. Something troubles you. It'll pass. I... I hope you don't miss the town too much. I hope you stay. Good night, Emily. Go away, you stupid man! Hey! What are you doing? Where are the boys? Go on home. Orders, Mr. Harvey. The school's closed. idea how much your visits have meant to my daughter. I will always be grateful. The enjoyment is mine, Your Excellency. If you say so. Others find it too far, too embarrassing to go on. I'm sorry about Mr. Javier. I let Mary know you were coming. Sir, what about Mr. Harvey? At the school. You've not heard. I've had no communication from Mr. Harvey for some time. It appears the premises were required. And he's been unable to find others. They're hounding people loyal to me. I had hoped they wouldn't take it out on the children. Are you asking my advice or telling me you intend to go? I intend to go. You make yourself the subject of gossip. You must know me well enough, Patrick, to realize how little that concerns me. I take it you wish to use the house in Chapel Row? If it is agreeable to you. Emily, would you leave us? Naturally, you may occupy the house, but there's a question of staff. Emily will come with me, if Emily wishes. She's taken admirably to the job of housekeeper here. It's difficult to secure servants so far out, whereas in town. I don't think I care for the arrangement. There's no arrangement. I prefer that she accompanies me to Sydney. But since she's free and old enough, I suggest it's Emily's right to choose for herself. I'll write to you. 
Safe journey, Connor. Thank you, Patrick. You mustn't worry about me, Mum. I'm grown up. That's precisely why I am worried. I'll write a letter and tell you, Mum, if me and Mr. Byrne. Mr. Byrne? He wants to pay court. Emily, I didn't know. Are you fond of him? I'm thinking about it, Mom. Will you let me know? Emily, this is for you. Look after it. But it's your own sewing box, Mom. I want you to. Perfect, Mr. Campbell. But, um, well, I couldn't afford it. Mr. Harvey, some of us have suffered for our allegiance to the governor, and we've a mind to help. Come and have a look around. Mr. Mark Harvey begs to acquaint the parents of his pupils that his academy will reopen at number 17 Pit Row next Monday, September the 4th, 1808. And it's all due to Mr. Campbell. A two-year lease at a peppercorn rent. I shall write to His Excellency. It'll please him. Ah, it will. And I shall go and call on all the parents. Well, in case they can't read. I'm grateful, Mr. Campbell. Mrs. Mannion. <clears throat> He's not to know, Mr. Campbell. Well, that was part of the bargain, ma'am, but you make me feel like a fraud. A partner in deception, sir. Your price was very fair. And as my late husband always said, property is the best investment. Nice and peaceful down here by the river. Well, it's time I went back. You wouldn't be here because Patrick Mannion sometimes rides this way. You're a fool, girl. Mannion's Mary Gentry. You'll only trifle with the likes of you. You want to be another Ellen, being pleasured by him when it takes his fancy. I'm going back to the house, Mr. Byrne. And you've got work to do. What's wrong with me, then? I've Wait. heard about you girls from the office. Would you let me pass? I'll read you a soldier of truth. I said, do this. Let me go! Bloody manion. What's so special about you? 